Creo que... Cut it. Okay. There Close we go. This. Okay, yeah, I can hear you. It looks good. Picture yes. Looks good. Well, so, so is your name T Anoop or, or your name is Tatino? What is it? Oh, my... My uh, my name is Anup, and my um, YouTube uh, channel name is Tatrino. Oh, I see. Okay, I just got, I thought maybe it was two different people. Well, I'm a kind of split personality, so. Oh yeah, I know this. this YouTube yeah. is the other side. Yeah, I know the split personality. Me too. I'm one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we met. It's good. You have a really nice background there. Eh? I see the Aum. Oh. There behind you. Oh, yeah. 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 We, well, we're in Spain. Yeah, here. I didn't, I couldn't see the, how, how the background was looking. There we go. That's better. Yes. So, how is the weather in Spain? Here is in Netherlands. It's, it's wet, wet snow. It's 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 dry and sunny, but it's chilly. Oh. it's uh, we 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 had uh, been eating out on the on the pool side in the morning uh, at like nine o'clock or ten o'clock. It's quite quite pleasant, but today it was colder, and there was a bit of a wind mm. coming down from the north. So we decided to eat inside to have our breakfast inside. Yes. Um. Can I ask you one question? Yeah, and sure. Then, yeah, because I was I was wondering that how to how to talk with you. Firstly, because my native language is Finnish, and I live in the Netherlands oh, for thirty oh, years. Oh, you're fin you're Finnish. Yes. Oh, I so, see. Okay, right. So I try I try my best in English. So I I read from your. Um, you speak English uh, fine. You speak English uh, fine. You're good. Thank you. You wrote in uh, in your uh, Shining World website um, that you teach traditional Vedanta in a non-traditional format. Yes. What does it mean? Um, well, tra the traditional Vedanta. Uh, the difference between traditional Vedanta and 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 non-traditional Vedanta is centers around the problem of uh, experience versus knowledge. Is 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 the self something that can be experienced as an object, or, or in, which is which is the notion that you have in non-traditional Vedanta? In non-traditional Vedanta, they take you as a experiencing person, an experiencing entity. They say that you're experiencing the world and you're suffering because of that. And if you could experience the self, your, your suffering would go away. So they emphasize meditation and various other practices to raise the kundalini and to get in the fourth state of consciousness and so forth. There's a whole experiential language there. It's a dualistic language. Mm. And and non and the traditional Vedanta is non-dual. It comes from the Upanishads. And the idea there is that there's only one principle operating in reality. There are not two principles. The, the, the non-traditional people say there's two principles, an eternal jiva, eternal individual, who's different from the universal or eternal self, and that he, that eternal person is supposed to connect to the uh, uh, eternal self that's called yoga, get connected to or start experiencing that and get the bliss of the self through that connection or that experience. But it, it, the Upanishads don't say that at all. Although the Upanishads do talk about yoga, Yo yoga is considered to be a, essential for purifying the mind. It's work that you can do on your mind. But the Upanishads say that the problem is you're already experiencing the self because there's only one self and its nature is bliss. 
and therefore uh, <clears throat> you don't have an experience problem, you have a knowledge problem. And so the Vedanta is therefore a means of knowledge. And a means, a means of knowledge is a, um, re just removes your ignorance. It doesn't give you a new experience. You're already experiencing bliss all the time. You, but but uh, because you're disconnected from your, your, your understanding, it's disconnected from who you really are, you, you falsely identify with your body-mind entity and you uh, see, seem to suffer or you, you do suffer, you seem to suffer. Whereas what Vedanta says, our job, our job is just traditional teachers, we just take away the ignorance and then you see what you already are, have been experiencing all along. So that's the difference. Now, I teach it non-traditionally in this sense, to answer the second part of your question. In the tradition... Yes. Pardon? Has your uh, teaching changed during the years? Do you have seen a change in no. uh, how you... Well, not no, not really, no. Because you can't... You, first of all, it's not my teaching. I don't. I, I only teach Vedanta. It's like teaching mm. physics. You can't say, you know, has your <laughs> physics changed? Has your physics changed over the years? No. Mm. Um, but uh, the traditional method has been to uh, take it verse by verse mm. and unfold the meaning of each word in the verse to get the whole meaning, and then mm. move on to the next verse. So, so that involves a, a lot of technical knowledge, particularly in the traditional setting, knowledge of Sanskrit, because most of the teachers taught Sanskrit, although my teacher and the other people in our lineage in the last 100 years or 70 years have been teaching in English. So, 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 um, so what I have done is, is, is I, I've ha had to remove a lot of the Sanskrit because the people in the West are not interested in, in learning it and you don't, and knowledge yes. doesn't, doesn't require a particular language. So if you can get words, if you can unfold the meaning of the ideas and give them an, a Western word, then that's good enough. But, but... Hmm. Is it, is it, uh, um possible to, to find uh, the, the meaning in, in, in English for, for yes, Sanskrit? It, yes, yes, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if the meaning is explained in your local language, then you can use any word. Hmm. As long as the, the teacher and the student know, understand that, that what that word means. Yes. Because it's not about the words, it's about what the words mean. A lot mm. of people think they're going to learn Sanskrit or learn Vedanta and they're going to get enlightenment. That's not going to happen because uh, it doesn't work that way. They're, they're the, what we call academic people. They, mm. they, they, it's like, I think learning Vedanta is like going to school where you, where you amass or accumulate knowledge. All the, all the teachings basically destroy themselves as they go. And all the teachings, mm. every, every teaching points to the same truth. Mm -hmm. so, so they're all just different ways or ang angles of looking at the same thing. And when I, when I read, uh, I read uh, uh, that um, Ferranta is a scientific uh, way of studying. So can yes, you, yes, what, what has it to do with academic and the scientific? What's the difference with academic uh, well, way? And, and, and the Vedanta be, science. Because, so, 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 because uh, uh, the teachings of Vedanta are based upon experience. Uh -huh, okay. So, in fact, I suggest you go on the YouTube. And I just did a seminar to, uh, last week, two weeks ago. It's about uh, 10 days ago. Uh, mm -hmm. Or was it last week I ended? It ended last week. Anyway, it's... it's um, <clears throat> And the first, the first talk will explain that, that, that the, the Friday night talk, you'll see, you'll see it. You can, it's the, the teachings, what, what is the teaching? What did I call this? Uh, like, uh, I'm getting old, I can't remember. I'll, I'll send you the link. 
Okay. And and uh, anyway, it it it's it just based upon an observation of of human experience, and it's mm -hmm. the, the the it's scientific in this sense is that if I were to teach you who you are and show you who you are. Uh, I would have to start with facts that you agree on, that we both agree on. And one fact we, you, that everybody agrees on is that their experience is that a conscious subject is experiencing objects. That's how people look at their experience. And that, that's just a fact. I, I am a conscious entity and I experience either material objects which are unconscious or I experience conscious beings which are conscious so those are the only two categories either inert objects or uh, intelligent objects conscious objects so mm -hmm. that then then the, the question then once we have established that fact then we move on to the, the next teaching which which <laughs> which, which is <clears throat> is there a difference between the conscious subject and the objects that it experiences. Now, this is where duality comes in. Now, mm -hmm. everybody will say, yes, there's a difference. And Vedanta says there's not a difference. But we can, ex don't expect you to believe it. We have to prove it to you. Hmm. I, mean, you kind of, I mean, kind of, uh, how you say, um, in a dream world, like a whole society, because they say everybody is saying that there is this yeah. object and subject. And yeah. just Everybody's in the same dream about yeah. experience. And, 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 but in a dream, now just that's a good, a good word that you use to, that applies to this situation. In a dream, are you, if you experience a tree or a mountain or a dog or a cat or your wife or your kids or your job or whatever it is, if you experience those things, are those things that you're experiencing different from you, or are they one with you? That's a good question. They're 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 one with you. They're not coming from outside. There's not e even when you see yourself in a dream, going through a having some experiences. That self that you see in a dream is non-separate from you, the conscious or experience non-experiencing witness. So the dream is also true in a way well it, so the dream is, dream is a metaphor for explaining the relationship between the conscious subjects and the objects that it experiences now now we have to and so we have a, all the teachings basically remove the set sense of separation between the subject and the object and but they relies upon a teacher being a student being qualified to understand and a teacher being skillful enough to get you to see what you're actually experiencing in um in finland there is a lot of uh, shamanistic tradition like uh, especially like in east finland and in lapland um, how you see it uh, different like in in vedanta non-duality and the shamanistic shamanistic traditions well what 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 do the shamans say about the nature of reality do they say reality is one or do they say it's it's uh, dualistic or pluralistic in other words there's one or it's many you see because uh, experience t tells us that that experience is a duality or a plurality or a multiplicity of objects that's what experience tells us but mm -hmm. Vedanta says you can't trust your experience and, uh, because, because it does look like that and we understand that that's how you see it. But, but actually it's different. It's, it's just one principle operating like in a dream. Every single thing in the dream is your own mind, your own substance, your own mind stuff. So Vedanta, Vedanta will prove that to you if you're capable, if you're prepared, if your mind is prepared to understand this. But it's very difficult um, to teach people Vedanta because the, most people are not qualified for it. Their minds are dull or they're too active. Yeah. Their minds are either very active, we call it rajasic, or dull or tamasic. 
they're sleepy. And, and so they can't uh, follow the teaching, the logic of the teaching, because the teachings are completely logical. They're based, mm. up, they're, they're based upon inference. And, and so in this sense, Vedanta is like a science. It is a science because most of our scientific knowledge comes from inference, not from direct experience. Now, it's true that, that, that inference is based upon direct experience, but from direct experience, you can reason to the unknown, to the to the unknown, right? So <clears throat> Vedanta reason we we get you to agree to something to, uh, that you understand and we all agree on, and then we reason to the unknown. That reasoning or that logic, it creates knowledge, and that knowledge takes away your ignorance, and then you see oh. It does. Yes, it does look like that. You know that thing is different from me, mm -hmm. but actually, it is. It's non-different from me. I am it, and it is me. So, so that you know. So that's how that's how Vedanta works, and that's traditional Vedanta. Yes, is it is it possible, uh, like, um, to have uh, Vedanta non-duality, like a uh, universal uh, university? Um, study. Of what, uh, well, what's there are. Yes, the, yes, there are. There are, are. Yes, but the problem is, you're st really studying yourself in a university. You're not studying yourself. So yes. people with an academic mindset think that the, that they're studying Vedanta. They don't realize that Vedanta is just a study of yourself, mm. and the Vedanta is a throwaway. So. You, you you do get a degree or an enlightened certificate from Vedanta, but uh, but that enlightened certificate cancels you. In other words, the one who would get the certificate gets canceled by the teaching. So uh, so it's very different, and, and Vedanta attracts a lot of academics and intellectuals and very very intelligent people because it's a very sophisticated uh, means of knowledge. And and it's 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 uh, it's very refined. It's very elegant. It's beautiful, and it, it attracts intellectual people. But you know the, the upside, the the downside, of course, is that that these people just memorize these concepts, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so they're. Is, they're is it, yeah. <laughs> yes. Is it possible, like, if we could imagine, like? Uh, you have a university and they, they are studying Vedanta. Is it possible to, 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 to study or teach it without a qualified teacher? Uh, yes, it, 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 yeah, it, people, there are many t teachers who are, people who do teach it who are not qualified. And it's possible, yeah. but it always, it, they always move on. In fact, most, yes. of the, most of the people that I teach have been taught by unqualified people. And and they they realize that 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 there's something they, they get a benefit. I'm not saying you don't get a benefit from mm -hmm. hearing these teachings and from from people who are not qualified to teach it. Um, but but basically, you, you, there's a whole methodology that's required there, and you have to teach it in a certain sequence. Have you read my, Have you read my book, uh, Essence of Enlightenment? Um. <clears throat> My friend has it. I haven't read it yet. I need to read it. Yeah, you need I to mean, read it. it it's yes. been published in Dutch. There's a Dutch edition uh, okay. uh, from, I think, Sansara Publishing. They published it. And mm -hmm. there, there I, I it's given the logic of the whole teaching, the big picture logic from A to Z. So you, you, uh, you, that needs to be clear. Because we reason from the big picture down to the small. We don't try to reason from the small picture up to the big. Understand? So you need to have the big picture. Mm. And once you've got it clear there, then, then you know, you, you'll see how logically and how rationally and intelligently all these teachings are arranged from A, A to Z. So that's something you need to, you need to read to get that clear. Um, how many years ha have you been teaching now? Uh, 50. 50 years. What, I'm, what, I'm 80 years old. I started teaching when I was 30. What keeps you going on? Like, 
what is a drive? Maybe a stupid question, but I am well. Um, I love it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when so you find, it, and and it set me free. So so. Mm. I, I don't have anything to gain by teaching and I don't have anything to lose by teaching. And mm. since I'm alive, I have to do something. So if I'm going to do something, I want to do something that delivers the maximum amount of pleasure and bliss and joy and it's maximum and helps other people. So because uh, I, 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 I'm not gaining anything by it. When you get set free, you have nothing to gain or nothing to lose. Mm. Um, but that doesn't mean you just sit around and do nothing. You could sit around and do nothing if you wanted to, because you're, mm -hmm. you're free to do nothing. But um, I like people. I like to watch the effects of this teaching on their mind. I like to see people's mind transformed. And I live a fabulous life. You know, I've just got thousands of friends and, and uh, acquaintances around the world. And I just have a great life. So it's, you know, it's a no-brainer for me. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and I don't care yes. about, I, I care about the results, but I don't, I care about it. I mean, I know that if you don't get it, it's not because I'm not a good teacher. I know it's because you're not qualified. So I can help you to get qualified. I can tell you, well, this is what you need to do to get it. Because I've seen over the years that when, as people work and more and more and more on it, as they gain more and more qualification at some point, they, they understand what we're talking about and they're, they're set free by it. If you, you read the satsangs on the website, uh, on the Shining World website, you'll see there's uh, li literally thousands of testimonials there from people whose mm. lives have been completely transformed by this teaching. In fact, I don't advertise because it's all done by word of mouth. Yes. You know, so it's like that. Yeah. Um, as, I, as I see, like, my own past in... Uh, Let's see, say it like, like a spiritual search, uh, starting in the end of 70s. Uh, there's just so much change, like now the internet is there, yeah. everything it is available. Uh, in the past, you need to go to library to have a book. And now it's just click and you are everywhere. So um, that's a, that's an ups there's an upside to that, but there's a big downside too, because it, you know, you get a lot of misinformation. Hmm. Yes. And unless you have a discrimination, how are you going to tell whether, whether you know, what someone says is true or not? And particularly hmm. with the Internet, where, pe where people, you know, there's this, this anonymity factor. Uh, pe people, you know, they can lie or they just can be deluded. Most of these modern teachers are not bad people. They're just self-deluded people. They've never been taught properly. They think they know something. They do know it as a kind of intellectual or as an object or based upon their own experience, but they're not actually qualified to teach it because there's a difference between teaching something and talking about something. Mm. There's a big difference. When you're teaching something, there's a methodology Can involved. Can you tell about I, the, I, the difference between... I have, I involve, I use, a, for me to claim to be a traditional teacher, I have to use the method of teaching. I can't teach my, I can't use my own method or my own experience. I can't mm -hmm. do that. Even though my experience, it, it verifies the teaching and the teaching confirms my experience. I can't do that. I'm required by the tradition, by the science to what? to teach a certain methodology. Well, most of these modern teachers, and, uh, and in fact, 99% of them uh, are just talking about it. Now that can be inspirational, it can be helpful, but it's very different from actually teaching somebody something. Mm. And, and if you look at the modern spiritual world, you know, there's just so much missing there. They don't talk about values. They don't talk about karma yoga, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They don't talk about the three gunas. There, there are all these topics that, that they just simply do not deal with because basically they just talk about the self and, and they more or less say that the world and the body and the mind and stuff is not real. There's no doer and so forth and so on. They, they get, keep away from values and all the important topics that human beings 
you know, have, they just stay away from all those topics and they just talk about this wonderful thing that you really are, right? Yes. So, but it's also like the same as, as, as the seekers nowadays, we are looking for quick solutions. And in the time of Buddha, they could wait many lives. To, oh, yeah. yeah, and yeah. You, now everything has to be very quick. Yeah, that's right. Well, that, that's the problem it's, it's since the 60s, 50s and 60s, when, when they started getting prosperity. People can't wait. It's instant gratification. And so, mm. uh, yeah, you know. I can see that there's also the good side that... Um, we don't we don't use many years in in a, maybe searching for somewhere what is not for us. Like there's so much information, so if we are honest, then we can find uh, the right stuff in a way. Um, but as you said, that you love it and it sets you free. So it it sounds really a humble way of describing yourself as a teacher. I think it's very, very beautiful. Yeah, the, 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 see, non-duality means nobody's special. Yes. Nobody's different from anybody else. So in our tradition, the method, the, the style of teaching, we call it the, the style of teaching is called friendship. Now, fr mm. friends, friends are equal. They look, they, they treat each other equally. Right, where whereas like most of these teachers think they're they're you know they they there's a power imbalance between them and the people they taught. They say I'm experiencing something, I know something you don't know. You need to surrender to me. You need to you know do what I tell you and so forth and so on. And that's a, not not a a, a a helpful environment for learning. Mm -hmm. You don't learn what, when you th think there's a difference. You share, this is sharing knowledge. And friends share things, and friends are equal, and they don't power trip each other and so forth and so on. Understand? Which, which, is, which is a huge problem in, this, in the modern spiritual world. These people dress up big, and they sit on, and they have these, oh, you know the whole story. You probably, you know, the... <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's 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 funny in a way, yes. Yeah, it but is. It, at the same time, like like we live in a democracy, but in a way, we we like to be slaves somehow. Some religion teaches us from above the the truth, the hope, maybe. Yeah. Is it something like uh, the Vedanta non-duality takes away the hope and gives you just. Uh, yeah. yeah, what is behind the hope? That's correct. That's correct. That's very well. That's very well said. Yeah, hope mm -hmm. is the most terrible emotion. This is why mm -hmm. Vedanta works because it's a science. You actually mm -hmm. get results if you if you learn how to inquire, how to think from mm -hmm. a non-dual platform. You will see specific positive, beneficial results in your life. You'll get more clear, more peaceful, more happy. Your your life will start to become successful. People write mm. me all the time about how suddenly their 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 financial problems disappear in in a matter of six months or a year, mm. and 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 their love problems disappear after you know a year or two, whatever it is. All these problems start to just disappear. And so, so it's scientific in that way. And so, and just praying to God, you know, like religion does, it makes yeah. you feel, it makes you feel kind of sad, you know, secure in a way, but it doesn't, doesn't remove your problems. The problem just stays. So you just remain as this small person praying to this big unknown factor somewhere or a remote factor that's apart from you, hoping that things are going to be different. And hmm. and they're they're never going to be different. The world is the world. It's always been this way. It's we're you know the world's no better or worse than it's ever been. Hmm. So uh, so that's right. Uh, you know we take away the hope factor and just tell you that you, you there's there's results. You, you'll get the results quickly. Hmm. And it it needs courage 
to to drop the well, the hope in fact well yeah but it does take that but the, the basic problem is that people are still expecting the world to give to provide some solution for them hmm. they still think they're going you know whatever it is they haven't realized that that this dualistic relationship with the with the objects in their life is a zero sum relationship you can't you can't win and you can't lose it's it's essentially a frustrating uh situation for every gain there's a loss for every loss there's a gain for every up there's a down for uh, for every right there's a left huh for every good there's a bad it, it's just everything keeps canceling itself out over and over and over again here in your life and and you, there's no movement there's no growth whereas when you take the yoga and vedanta yoga is a technology for purifying the mind when you take the, the yoga and vedanta you start noticing practical changes in your life right away positive changes so mm -hmm. you, you you get inspired and then you get then you the more inspiration you get from the experience that you're having the more courage you get so you start getting more and strong and more confident in your in your knowledge like that so yeah. but it, but you know it's it, like you say it's not a quick fix you have to work at it and you have to commit to it once you once you've seen the value of of vedanta and you then you commit yourself to it then uh then you can go as quick fast as you want depending upon you know the, how much you know inspiration your commitment gives you that's all so and some people yes. are very slow and, and 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 some people are middling and some people go very quickly that's all depending mm. upon i was lucky because i i discovered it when i was 25 and i got a i got a proper traditional vedanta teacher when i was 28 mm. so so i knocked around in the yoga world in the experiential world for three years i went to india did all these things but <clears throat> Once I got a teacher, it was no problem. It was, you know, and I just, I just focused on it totally. I was absolutely clear that I didn't, wasn't interested in the world anymore. And, and I had a qualified teacher and, and I was young and had the energy and I had money in the bank. So I didn't have to worry about, it. and I was not interested in love and all those stupid things that mm -hmm. people are interested in. And so it was very, very, very easy and quick for me. It was it was hard work, but I liked doing the work, you know, because I was young and energetic and strong, and I was committed to, to uh, you know, getting rid of the suffering because I suffered a lot when I was younger. So, uh, so yeah, yeah. I tried to find a question. But I mean, you are answering or you are talking through the questions. So what I was, I was just one minute ago, I was thinking about that. There's a lot of um, all kind of stuff about enlightenment, especially like YouTube. Every second guru is teaching about yeah. sudden enlightenment or whatever. How you see like non-duality and Vedanta and your own experience on this subject? Well, what do you, no, I don't understand the question. What, what do you mean? Like, how you see this, this uh, talk about enlightenment? Uh, well, it, what is it, it all about? Well, it's, it, 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 people are suffering and, and, and they want to hear that there's a solution. Hmm. Right? Now, now, if you look at what's happening there, the uh, uh, psychedelics and 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 uh, mind altering drugs are starting to come back and become popular. Well, why is that? Because mm. people are suffering. So when people tell you there's this thing called enlightenment, and and they could get your mind focused or get you high for a minute discussing it, and you have some sort of vision or some sort of experience, uh, it it excites your interest. You start getting interested. And people are suffering more than ever because this is a totally materialistic age. Uh, huh? There's too much wealth. The, the, there's way too much wealth in the society. So we're sick from affluence. We just have too mm -hmm. much money. Money's worth nothing. You can. There's money everywhere. It's the world's awash in money. And so people mm -hmm. are just chasing objects. And, and the more 
of that stuff that they chase, the more entertainment and so forth they seek, the more they suffer. Cause because those are just temporary highs they get. And and they and they're trying to fulfill an emptiness inside themselves with small experiences. Well, you can't do that. That emptiness, that ignorance, that hope, that dissatisfaction, that's very deep. And some small little little experience of one, of one form or another is not going to solve it. So, um, you know, so, you know, um, there's no world solution from Vedanta. It's only qualified people. Hmm. In other words, at some point, people start to grow up and they start thinking, oh, shit, you know, this isn't what I, this is not what I thought it was. Mm. And they get more serious about life. Usually you don't hear about Vedanta until you, you're in your 40s or maybe even 50s. Because then, mm. then, you know, you've had enough experience in, under your belt <laughs> to, to uh, you know, start to get realistic about what, you know, what the world mm. has to offer. So, Yeah. Yes. So in, 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 um, in fact, like everybody is welcome to Vedanta, only that you need to experience life beforehand. It's better, of course. It's, it's better. But now, yeah. now I, I, I mean, I live in Europe now. I moved from America to Europe. I live in Spain and I've yes. noticed there are many more young, younger people now are getting involved who they have experienced life more at an earlier age. So the children, young people are because of all the experiences that are available to them and the freedom they have to, to enjoy their you know, lives, uh, mm. the, the, more, uh, the, the more mature they get earlier. So we find people now, you know, young people in their late 20s and early 30s who are quite grown up. And, and mm. uh, so, you know, that's one of the upsides of this consumer culture is that People burn out faster, and once once you burn yeah. out, then you then you you rate at least to listen to this teaching and see if maybe you know maybe I'm this problem, M maybe the world is not the problem, maybe I'm the problem, and then uh, you, then you start to become self aware and you start to grow. Mm. So, um, so in a way, there is there is hope, like the positive hope that. Um, it's the hope is all not always like negative. I see that there's no, no, that, that's right. But there's this, this, the people are searching the real answers and themselves. And, and yeah, if you if you were if you were to read the the website in, in uh, my website, there's there's thousands of satsangs on there. Most of them are all testimonials to how mm. how 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 Vedanta has transformed their lives. Uh, I don't even put, post them all yes. anymore. I get so many people every, every you know, every day I, my inbox fills up with things from people saying thank you and, and this is really working for me and so forth and so on. So, mm -hmm. so it, it, you know, it works, but, you know, it's not going to become a mass movement and, you know, or anything like that. <laughs> so I put, a, I put a link of your uh, Shining World website here and people can look. Uh, your site it's it's a lot of a lot of stuff for everybody who is interested and and Fedanta and non-duality and cool and well thank you that's that's good yeah it's yes. helpful it's very yeah. helpful and I, I'll send send you a look for this book uh, look, I forget what is the title is in in um, in Dutch uh, but it's published by Sansara publishing yes. company and it's called uh, how to attain enlightenment that's that's the english title okay and uh that's very well translated i know and mm -hmm. i've got some other people uh, quite a number of friends in holland i go i just taught there a, a month ago or six weeks ago mm -hmm. and and so you know if you're interested uh, you could probably meet some of those people and have some good yes. stuff on with them if you're interested in vedanta because they're there's uh, several people who are quite sophisticated and who mm. actually teaching are helping other people there. So, have you been ever in Finland? Uh, no, I haven't. I've been to Norway, but not to mm. Finland. Finland is, Finland is the Finnish people are. They do the most yoga in in Europe. There's the most uh, heavy heavy rock bands in in Finland. 
you know, there is uh, all kind of uh, dualities in a way. Yeah. And there's, uh, there's also very uh, strong, like shamanistic uh, uh, healing uh, tradition. Yeah. And, and they are sincere people and uh, spiritual people, quiet also. But yeah, I know. Yeah, well, I have one Finnish friend. Uh, she, she married a friend of mine. And I, mm. I got to know more, a little bit more about the Finnish psychology and so forth and so forth. Yeah. Uh, is your family there? Do you have a family there? Or? Yes, yes. And but, uh, I, I, I put this, uh, our conversation to, to my site and there are a lot of Finnish people who are looking looking at you and, and start to know you. Oh, yeah. What, what the message would you give to this nor northern people of, of the Santa Claus? <laughs> <coughs> There's hope. <laughs> <laughs> don't, start, don't start drinking. <laughs> Do yoga. <laughs> and yeah. Study Vedanta, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yes. So um, I think this is this is uh, good now. We have we have been talking like 40, 45 minutes. Good. So. Well, yeah, it's very very pleasant to talk to you. Uh, Thank Anup. you. Same hey, to you. The yeah. word uh, Anup though Anup is an Indian name, isn't it? Yes. Well, did you go to India? Yeah, I I went to Osho. Oh, you're an Osho guy. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, I went in the 19, 1980, I became oh, right. a Sanyasin, and, uh, but in a way, I'm, I'm kind of, um, well, I'm not the scientist, but I, I like to look about stuff in, in a kind of scientific way, yeah. and, uh, and in that way, I'm not a follower of anything. Yeah. So no, you're, just, a, you're a follower of the truth. You're interested in the truth. It, yes. Yeah. No. Yes, and it's really nice to nice to meet you now. Oh. And it was like ten years ago. I was visiting your one one uh, lecture in here in, in the Netherlands. Oh, I, yeah. And, and I remember you talked very very beautifully. And uh, of course now, like talking to you is is so much so much more. And and uh, and, and uh, your wise words is so nice to hear. Well, it's my pleasure, uh, Anup, and uh, take it easy, and uh, maybe we'll mm. chat again. Or I'm, uh, I, we're going to do a, a seminar in, in Holland again soon in the spring, so yes. that's on the website. Maybe you can come and you can meet some nice people there and listen to some talk. So we will meet then. Okay. 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 Take it easy. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> Bye. Bye.